Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim, coming to you from Jacksonville, Florida. I think yesterday I was confused and said I was in Tampa. I'm not in Tampa. <laughs> hey, you know, getting older, got confused. Anyway, I was thinking about something else that day. That's why I said that. Uh, it's got to do with that RV show that's coming this month. Are you going to go? It's the largest one in America. It's at the Tampa State. It's at the Florida State Fairgrounds, which is in Tampa. So I'm unsure whether I'm going or not. There's a few things on that date that are uh, conflicting with me. I'm going to try and make it. And if you can make it uh, and you can run into me and say hi, I'd appreciate it. Come on down. I think the uh, admission is $15. Uh, seniors get $2 off. And your admission is good <clears throat> for a second day. But speaking of RV, uh, this morning's video is about RVing. You know, should you RV? Should you consider RVing? Is RVing uh, a good way of life? Is RVing, um, you know, something you should consider full time? Is RVing something that you should, you know, uh, want to do occasionally every year and, you know, just buy one and keep your home? Well, let's get into it. So. Let's start with what I just said. Should you buy one and, you know, have a home and use it occasionally? Heck no. <laughs> Why? Well, these things are, everybody knows they biodegrade. They're nothing but problems eventually. Um, now, that's kind of an overstatement because, you know, if they're just sitting there and they're not doing anything, it's really hard to... For anything to break right so I, I, I retract that a little bit I'll just say that they're not good investments they are a depreciating asset they went up in value during the uh, pandemic and you know, everybody wanted to uh, get out they were locked down they wanted to get out and people wanted to work from uh, work remotely uh, once they discovered they could do that they're like hey get an RV and travel around and and make my money and see the country great idea I promote it but that's, on, that's not this question. This question is, should you buy one and still live in a house and just have one to go, you know, uh, camping two or three times a year? I say no. I say for what you're going to spend to buy a new or a used one, to let it sit 99% of the time and use it two or three times, you can just rent one. And you say, well, you know, I want my own. I like the special kind and colors and I want this and I want that. Well, then, you know, that's gonna be a very expensive camping trip for two, three, or even four times a year, even six times a year. To go out and spend, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, whatever you wanna spend, you can spend on these things. And to use it uh, for a week or a few days or a weekend is, is not, I don't think, a good idea. If you got more more dollars than cents, and that's what you want to do, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. People are like, hey, I got, I'm a, I'm a billionaire. I don't care if I ever use it. I'll buy it and just let it sit. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to do. Let's pull in here and finish this little video before I go into McDonald's. Um, so, because they're not a really a good investment uh you're not getting your money's worth in that case that's one of the the worst uh uh benefits of having one is just to own one park it next to your house or even worse putting it in a storage place and then paying that too you're making payments on it even if you pay cash for it if you store it and you're just paying on it it's just, yeah, I don't, I would never do it. I would never own what I have if I had an apartment or a house or a condo. Uh, no, I certainly wouldn't. Now, if you pick up something, uh, let's say you own a house or a condo and you like camping and you don't want to do a tent and you don't want to rent one because that's not cheap either, but you can buy a, a little pop-up or, or even a, a pull-behind camper that's small, that's a hard-sided tent for, you know, a couple of grand or something, a few grand, 
Well, in that case, it might average out for you to be a, um, a good value dollar cost average wise because you only spent a few thousand bucks. So it's all relative. In that case, maybe. Now, let's go to the next question. Uh, should, you, should you consider RVing as a lifestyle? Well, I think that it's, it's obvious that it is because since the pandemic, when thousands of people bought these and moved into them and started traveling and working remote and even becoming YouTube creators, doing very well, making a lot of money, uh, just with just providing all the information and traveling and meeting people, like-minded people, there's nothing but pros about doing it. Uh, the only thing is, you have to have a source of income to be able to provide the cost for the, um, uh, you know, where you're staying. So they got memberships. They got things called, uh, uh, I don't know what they're called. I forget the name of it, but you pay so much a year and then you can go to these campgrounds and you can stay for free uh, for a certain length of period of time. You can pay a little extra money on those memberships and stay for a little longer period or the campgrounds that are real hard to get in and all of that. And that's good and bad because what happened is, is a lot of the, uh, because RVing became exploded, a lot of people, uh, a lot of corporations, I should say, started buying mom and pop RV places, campgrounds, and turning them into some corporate entity, just like they've done with real estate. You know, they go out like Redfin and all them and buy blocks at a time of homes. And they're all uh, Wall Street, um, Wall Street owned, you know, corporately, and they rent them out hoping to make profits. So in that, in that case, it's a little sad of what's happening to all of our RV parks, the mom and pop ones and all that. But if you've got the money to join these memberships or you want to stay at um, remote areas uh, like on BLM land, like out in Quartzsite, Arizona, a uh, certain time of the year when it's not hot, or you want to go to state parks and national parks and you can buy a pass and that's cheap, but you could live without Wi-Fi because there is no gonna there is no internet at many many of these campgrounds, RV parks, and uh, through, uh, throughout the United States. So now you got to invest into, you know, if it means your work or you have to, you're a YouTuber <laughs> and you rely on internet, uh, this is a this is a dilemma. But do I promote it to live in one? Absolutely, uh, because the cost of living today with what they're doing to houses. And the cost of owning one with HOA fees, property taxes, the insurance uh, is, is through the roof. In Florida, for uh, property damage insurance, hurricane insurance, flood insurance, if you can even find it, you're going to pay whatever they tell you to pay. So home, owning a home is, of course, it's, the, it's a good investment in most cases, but uh, there should be a downturn coming soon. And there already is a year-over-year -year reduction in value of homes. Uh, even if it's just a little bit, it's just like buying a car or an RV then. You're, you're losing money. But if you're not going to sell it and you paid up here and it's only worth down here in, say, two or three years and the market crashes, what do you care? You're just living in it. If it's affordable to you monthly, you don't have HOA, your insurance is good, you're not living in Florida, you don't have all the high cost of insurance and flood insurance and everything that we have here where I live in the state of Florida, uh, there are very affordable uh, homes still for sale and that have come down in price. And so in that case, you know, buying a home is good, but buying an RV and living in it and being able to call home wherever you open the door and changing every now and then and all your furniture is with you, everywhere you pull it to or drive it to, depending on the kind you have, is and if you're adventurous and you just like you know seeing mountains one day and maybe flatlands the next east one week next month you're out west and you just really like travel and a lot of people love travel people travel around the world they got passports they get on airplanes and they go to uh, italy and france and australia and mexico and all these places i think this kind of travel is more affordable and we have a very beautiful country and there are places that are absolutely worth repeating over and over and over after you make your way around to maybe some of your favorite spots but exploring the country 
and finding places and even getting there from point A to point B on the back roads versus the freeway and seeing little town America is, is fun in itself. So lots and lots of pros uh, regarding living and buying an RV and living in it permanently. But you gotta have a source of income to keep the gas going. Uh, you're not getting a hotel room every night, so that buys a lot of gas, uh, but you still have to pay somewhere to park it unless you wanna stay at a Cracker Barrel, a Walmart, Bass Pro Shop, and many other places that do allow you to stay for a night or two uh, while you're on your way from point A to point B. And that way, when you get to somewhere where you have your full hookups, like the water, electric, and your sewer, uh, and then you can get a monthly rate or a weekly rate if you plan on staying there a while. The daily rates are expensive. All right, what kind of RV should you get? Well, you know, that's that's the big question. When you go to the RV show, uh, and they have, them around, <coughs> they have them around the country, <clears throat> You can get excited about driving one. You can get excited about pulling one. You can get excited about all these different things they have. They got these off-road kind. They've got the kind that you don't take off-road. They've got several different styles of driving. You got class A, class B, class C. And uh, the class B is a very popular uh, style right now because it's like a, an Amazon van. They're very small and compact. They get very good gas mileage. They're fully self-contained, including a generator. And you can be a little more surreptitious if you wanted to camp uh, in a neighborhood on the side of the road <clears throat> and you don't want to pay for like places to stay. <clears throat> I think those are more for uh, weekenders, couples, uh, a nomad. Uh, oh, I'm not going to answer that. And I didn't even uh, lose connection with my uh, video. How, how rare is that? Normally when I get a phone call come in, it stops my video. All right, they must have done something. Great. But the Class B, they're $150,000. I think a cheap one is like seventy or 80000 for a new one. <clears throat> of course, used is the way to go because most people buy these RVs. They very use them very little, and they are still in like new condition. As long as you get one that's just a few years old. If you buy one that's 10 years old and it's been biodegrading or they've neglected the maintenance or things are already wrong with it, it's just a money pit like buying a boat. I would stay away from it and also stay away from anything, anything built uh, during the pandemic. There's been so much on the online about the problems and the dealers are just not returning calls. You're, you're, you get in a big waiting list uh, and if you're going to live in it, and that's going to be your home and you know it doesn't work and you need to oh man so stay away from that but <clears throat> what kind to buy well i uh you know when i was young and you know i looked at these motorhomes going around before i ever bought one i looked at those big uh, movie star kind you know the class a the bus you know the one that you got to be a millionaire to own because they cost a million dollars of course i could never get one because you know, they're a million dollars and it's above my pay grade, but they do have those style called a class A. They're not on a bus chassis. They don't have dual axles in the rear. They're a very lower, low line uh, driving kind, but it's called a class A. I decided from ever wanting one of those because uh, you can buy some short ones, but they need a pull through sight. And once again, it's a motor-driven vehicle that requires a lot of maintenance versus a towable like I have. Only thing I have to worry about is the axle and the bearings and a flat tire. Uh, otherwise, I can pull it. Uh, and if anything inside, like a refrigerator, or the air conditioning, or some of the appliances break. But with a driving kind, that is, you got all the other stuff I just mentioned, plus the motor and the outside underneath the transmission the all these things the components that go along and if you plan on traveling with it and you put miles on it um, <clears throat> and you have to take it into a shop and that's what you live in that could be I, i'm against it I, I don't go for that now if i had more money than i could ever spend i would have the big bus and I go around and feel really proud because those are really bitching looking uh, but the regular class a's even a diesel pusher uh, they're just too big 
There's, you you got to watch where you drive around town. They won't even clear tree branches. There's so much you got to worry about with one of those. You don't need a CDL driver's license. You don't need any special license. An, uh, an old man, an old lady can drive one with a regular driver's license. Uh, but um, they're, they're first of all, they're the most expensive kind of RV you can buy and probably the most expensive kind uh, to maintain. Um, so again, keeping on this topic, what kind to buy? Well, towables are nice. Should you get one with a slide or without a slide? Well, if you get a real small a towable, probably today it's very difficult to buy any RV that doesn't have a slide, even if it's a small one, because they make a, a, make a world of difference in the room inside. Once you pop it out a little bit, you know, you go from like a little thing to, you know, pretty nice. I have one with two slides and mine is a, a modern style slide. They can all give you problems. I don't even know much about it other than I'd have the latest in technology of what's supposed to be um, reliable. So I make sure I keep it lubed and greased and all the rubber that goes around those slides when they come out. So bugs and things and it doesn't get brittle uh, and keeps it nice and soft and pliable, uh, which you definitely want to do. So towables, I had a 16 foot with no slide out. My, my first, um, it wasn't really my first RV in my life, but my last one that I had before I have what I have now, which is a 2024 Flagstaff Micro Light, and it's the model 25 FKBS that has the front kitchen bedroom slide. The Forest River Wolf Pup I had, and both of these are made by the company Forest River. I'm a Forest River product guy, I guess. Uh, the Wolf Pup was a very, very popular model. Uh, Wolf Pup made two models that were extremely popular. Uh, one had a uh, bunk house in it. It had bunk beds in the rear. And one had a um, the FK. Uh, I think it's called, no, the FB. I, I forget the model now. Anyway, it had a bed in the front and a rear bath with a tub. And I, I would have took either one when I went out to buy one, but I'm glad I got what I did. And that was the... Uh, the, uh, the rear bath with the front bed. I really like that model after uh, looking at the bunk beds because if you have kids or you have a, um, a third person or something like that, uh, the little 16 foot wolf pup with the bunk house is something of course that um, you need because if you're not just a couple, uh, you gotta have that. But as a couple, you have a front queen bed there and it's it was really cool. I lived in that 16 foot camper for a year and a half. After a year and a half, and I decided this about RVing. This is what brought me to making this video. Because I have experience. I had a, a Class C RV years ago that I also lived in full time. Seems like every RV I buy, I live in it. They are not RVs that I've bought because I bought it like a boat or a motorcycle or something that was sitting there in the garage. It was an extra vehicle, an extra toy. Uh, to use occasionally to have some fun with. All the RVs I've bought, I lived in them. And all the RVs I've bought, I got my money's worth because when you live in it and you don't have to pay rent, you're really saving yourself, especially if you can find a place that runs four to $800 a month to live, uh, you're saving at least $1,000 a month today in rental fees of an apartment or a condo. So you're paying yourself back $1,000 every month towards what you gave for that RV. So if you stay in it for a year or two, uh, that's like twelve dollars to $24,000 you paid yourself back, a rebate you got on that RV versus what you paid to live somewhere uh, if you got somewhere between $400 and $800 a month. So that's really good, really good. But what I found out when I started living in an RV uh, in California, I had a Class C, and then I'll talk about the one right now, the Wolf Pup I had uh, here in Boynton Beach, Florida, down in Palm Beach County, Florida. I lived in it for a year and a half, and I thought it was just fun. I thought it was like a fort. It was like, it's small, but I just liked how everything looked in there and how I was fully self-contained. I just was stoked all the time being in it. And even though I didn't 
have like room to walk around from one room to another like you would uh, sticks and bricks, as they call it. I just adapted. To me, I adapted. I had a lot of people comment on my YouTube channel that it would just be, it would just be too small for them. Meanwhile, I made video after video after video, uh, just bragging about it, loving it. I decorated it nice. And I had a lot of compliments, though, from people that really liked it because it was a very unique small camper. It had the high ceiling too, which made it feel very roomy. A lot of the smaller campers that you pull, like a Coleman, for example, and just to name one, there are several, the ceilings are low. So when you stand up in it, I'm only 5'10", but still you feel like, like an old, old house with a low ceiling. You know, today they make everything with high. Higher ceilings make a difference in everything. And mine had a high ceiling and it just felt roomier in there. And I never even used the, uh, the stove. I had a grill outside and I, I, just, I just loved it. It had a big awning. You put out your furniture out there. So you're able to move from inside to outside when the weather's good and at night, you can sit out there and listen to your music, read a book. And you know that just inside this portable home you have, I just find it really cool. It's hard to describe, but, um, it was small. So after a year and a half and I adapted to it and fell in love with it and liked this kind of living, uh, I took a trip in this past, this past October and I went to the state of Georgia, North Carolina, uh, just going to take my wolf pup camper and, and just tool around. And instead of just living in it where I was, I wanted to pull it. I wanted it to be like these other YouTubers I see that are going here and there and the other place. You know, and I thought about it and how I could afford it and where I could stay and what campgrounds and what prices would be, the gas it would take to pull it, and on and on and on. The, the ideas went through my head. And after I finally decided I'm going to go ahead and do it, and uh, I kind of figured what it would cost, it never really happened because here's what, here's what happened. And it was fortuitous. I got up there in the state of Georgia and North Carolina, and I... I went in the beginning, I stayed at a Cracker Barrel overnight, and then uh, I think I only stayed in one campground that was in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Uh, the rest of the time, I, um, I stayed, I had it parked at my daughter's house in uh, North Atlanta, in North Georgia. Uh, and she actually had, a, you know, electric hookup for me and water source, so, uh, and I used her restroom. and. Um, I left it there. You say, why? Why didn't you keep traveling? Well, what happened was we were traveling and uh, my YouTube channel is, uh, you know, it's a big, it's a big size. It's not huge, but it's pretty big, uh, 61,000 subscribers. And people like the channel and they, they were always wanting to meet me. And I had a few uh, subscribers that owned properties where I was going. I had actually a lot of people invite me to come right to their home and stay in their home for a couple of days just to get to know me more and visit me and share a meal together and talk. I mean, I had the outpouring of generosity was beyond anything I've ever experienced in my life. But the, the invitations that I ended up accepting were places that happened to be very close to where my daughter lived. And they were these chalets and log cabins that were Airbnbs. The people that owned them weren't there, they rent them out. But they thought, hey, would you like to go? And neither one of them, you know, well, one did. The first one, it wasn't like uh, pro bono or, you know, if you go and stay in my cabin and make YouTube videos promoting my Airbnb uh, address and how people can get in touch with me uh, to rent my cabin, because that's what they do. That's what lots of people do in LJ, Georgia and all around Georgia and all around the country. Airbnbs are very popular. Uh, but anyway, he just liked my channel and offered me to go. He knew I was going. I talked about going and he said, just go there. Just tell me what week you want. I'll block it off and you can just have it. And I thought, wow. So out of my appreciation, I made videos anyway because I was stoked. It was an amazing, amazing uh, chalet. It's the Sunrise uh, or sunshine, I always got them confused, uh, chalet. And there's a, there's a website you can go. I think it's, uh, 
Is it sunrise? I'm going to get it wrong, I know. Sunrise or sunshine? You can check it out. Anyway, uh, the guy and his wife are beautiful people, and they, they let me stay there. And ironically, while I was there, before the, uh, the week ended, and I didn't want to go. It was so fun. It was so beautiful. There was firewood. There was a fire pit. There was a mountain view. It, it was awesome. I got a, a, a off-road four-wheeler ride and all this uh, in that week. It was just amazing. Plus, we went around to all the Apple festivals and all that. So now I've forgotten all about my RV. I'm back in a sticks and bricks, basically. But I'm in a, um, a chalet. It's something I've never experienced. Something I may not ever experience again because I'm a little frugal and I don't think that they're that inexpensive. I mean, you'd have to pay for something like that because it's a like renting an RV. It's kind of expensive, but it's a one-time deal, you know? So if you can justify it, you know, do it. But while I was there, uh, a colleague, a fr not a colleague, a friend of his that happens to uh, live in the same neighborhood uh, caught wind of it and said, hey, I really like these videos that he's doing and would he come and stay at mine? and?" make videos and promote mine? And, or do you have an exclusivity on uh, Sarasota Tim? <laughs> and, and my friend said, no, 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 I'll, I'll let him know. And so he let me know. And sure enough, about three or four days after I stayed there, I was invited to go uh, to, which was in the area up in Blue Ridge, uh, to Blue Ridge Cabin. Uh, Blue Ridge, it's called Blue Ridge Cabin, Blue Ridge Chalet, Blue Ridge Hidden blue, hidden hideaway. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I'm so sorry I forgot the name of both of them exactly. Anyway, he said, uh, Come on up, stay at mine too. Now, this guy had a mansion. It was a chalet for sure. It had two floors, four bedrooms, three and four families could go there. It had a game room, jacuzzis. The other one had a jacuzzi too. Both of them were absolutely amazing. And so he said, would you mind making some videos though, uh, you know, in exchange, you know, and I wouldn't charge you anything. I'm like, sure, <laughs> sounds good to me. So we did it. Now, what does all this got to do about the RVing? Let's get back to the RVing. So because I didn't use the RV, but a couple of times at a Cracker Barrel parking lot and um, uh, at my uh, friend's uh, place, I forgot about that one. Oh my gosh, Ben, why do I always forget? The first one I stayed at, I had a subscriber, Ben, who lives in Charlotte. Uh, he said, hey, you're up in this area. I've got a, a lake house that you're welcome to go and stay in. And so we went there and I stayed a week there. I fell ill, uh, either sick or with COVID or something. I fell very ill and... Uh, it was a godsend because Ben, you know, had me go at the right time and I laid up in bed there. But I did enjoy a few days there uh, when I was on the mend and before I got sick. So it wasn't all just like laying in bed. It was a great place on a huge lake. Ben came up, pulled out his pontoon boat. We took a ride around the lake, a tour. Uh, we got to ride jet skis. I helped him move his jet skis over to a boat ramp where he wanted to take them out for the winter and take them home. And he came up and we had lunch together. Uh, I went to his business before I went to this lake house. He let me camp in his business parking lot with electric and water uh, at his uh, place of business outside of Charlotte. So the whole month of October, I'm gonna be an RVer and I'm gonna really travel because I've been living in my RV and I wanted to do just do this big traveling like I watch other YouTubers do. Well, it never came to fruition. I ended up staying at Ben's workplace, a Cracker Barrel, and at one campground, Maggie Valley, of which Ben found for me, in uh, outside of Cherokee. And then the rest of the time, uh, I did sleep in it uh, several nights uh, after all the other cabins were visited and I exhausted my stays there. Uh, I stayed at my daughter's driveway. And so we did stay in it. But the point of all of that is it was meant to take my RV, even though I didn't travel and stay in a lot of campgrounds, because I got the RV I got now. I went out one day, 
trying to make some YouTube videos. And I made some at some mobile home parks. I made some at a place that sells these little, uh, these little, they look like houses, but they're just storage units. But you can finish them out to live in them. And so I made a video there. And then I went and saw an RV park. Uh, my daughter and I and all of us took a, a, a trip one day up in the mountains uh, while we were visiting. And we went by this place called Camp Oaks RV Park. And they sell Cherokee and they sell Forest River RVs. And they were, uh, Forest River, uh, the micro light that I have now, had only been with them for a short time. They have just completed recently their first full year of selling this brand. Well, let me tell you, I saw the outside of these campers, the one that I have now, this Flagstaff camper. Also, Rockwood is the same exact camper made in the same uh, factory on the same floor. And they just put a different decal on it. Why they have two, anybody guess, but they're the same exact thing. So, I saw these campers at Camp Oaks, but they happened to be closed. But, you know, they had signs with the prices right on them, it, it, just giving you all the information. What, what no car dealers, what no RV dealers that I've ever seen ever have done. A straight up, straightforward, here's what we got. This is our price, and you won't pay a penny more. There is no gotcha fees. There's no extra nothing. And I thought, man. But more than anything, I was just swept off my feet with the looks of these under 30 foot campers. Everything from, I think they were like uh, 18, 19 feet to 25 feet, which is what I have. And they just had this beautiful nose in the front with this car windshield and the decals and they sat up high off the ground and they had Goodyear endurance tires, beautiful mag rims. And I just had to see inside these campers. So I was all set to return to South Florida with my wolf pup that day, that day. I just went, uh, actually, yes, I saw the place and then I went back the next day only to discover they were closed. But I went back because I was gonna leave that day after traffic died in Atlanta because traffic is terrible. But when I found out they were closed and I was just so taken, I think God had something to do with it. I know God did. I, I just felt like I had to stay another night and return the next day when they open to see inside. Now they closed two days in a row. So that was the second day that they were closed. So the next day they were gonna be open. So I, uh, I went and they were open and when I got there, they had every door of every camper open, plugged into electricity, nobody bothered you. They invite you to come in, take a look, all the prices and everything was there. They even had, like I said, all the lights on and everything. Uh, it was just such an invitation. I've never been, you know, people can learn from them and people should copy them. If you wanna sell RVs, do it the way Camp Oaks does it. I mean, it's very simple. It's just straightforward, honest, treating people like you wanna be treated. So I go in and then I thought the outside looked good. Man, it was hard to decide. It was, they were so nice, the colors. So many of these RVs you go in, they get the God awful colors on the inside, that, that booth that, yeah, it's good to sit at eat, but you don't sit there and enjoy yourself. It's a, like a booth at a restaurant and they got, you know, the colors and all that are just the floor plan, low ceilings, all these things. I've seen so many RVs and 99% of them I got no use for. So I went back and I said, I got to see inside of them. I went inside of them and I was, I was impressed even more. I could not believe what I was seeing. I fell in love the moment I stepped in one. I liked the steps that I went up. I liked every single thing about this Flagstaff camper. So I started going in all the different ones. And by the grace of God, he happened to have all the different ones with the exception of a couple models to look at. There wasn't anything missing. And while I was torn between a couple, there was one that I, I knew what I wanted. After living in my wolf pup, uh, and this is what you should decide if you're gonna get a, a, an RV, is what's priority to you? 
Well, I learned that living in a 16 footer with no closet space and nowhere to put anything, I needed storage. I needed storage more than anything. I mean, that was a number one, top of the list. So after uh, really liking this one floor plan that had nice windows and a view and uh, kind of roomy looking, you know, where you sit and watch TV and the kitchen was there and all, there was something about this one that I knew was really the one. It had this front kitchen, the front windshield. You've seen mine, you look at, you look at my videos. You know, it, 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 the kitchen is right there. And so you're looking out your window all the time. And it had this huge storage uh, closet in the bedroom. And the bedroom had a slide out on it. And you had this much room uh, from the foot of the bed to the closet to stand and get dressed. And the closet had full length mirrors and it had tools sliding a closet from here to there. Put all your clothes you want in there and drawers big, wide, deep, huge drawers for folding clothes. There is more storage. I've shown it. Go look at my video. It's the best camper you can get. I'm biased. So I said, I got to have this camper. I need this camper. I'm going to live in a camper. I'm living in my wolf pup. I can't go back in my wolf pup now. I got to get this camper. And because this guy and his wife, uh, Aaron and Kimberly, that's their names. Call them up. Go over there. It's in Dahlonega, Georgia to Camp Oaks. Look them up. They got a website. Tell them I sent you. And I talked to him and I told him what I have. He didn't even see it. He gave me so much money for it. And I've already lived in it for a year and a half. It didn't matter if he gave me nothing for it. I didn't owe it anything. So whatever he gave me was a bonus. And I took that off the price, which I thought was already a very reasonable price. It's a 2024. They sell for $40,000, $39,995. And I received $10,000 for a camper that I've already paid myself back $15,000 in living in it for a year and a half. So I basically got $10,000 off in my mind. He got my camper and he can sell it and make a profit on it. And that's what he allowed me towards the trade-in. And we all know how that works. It's probably not what he's actually giving you because he's got to make money. But still, that was what he took off the price. Ten more thousand dollars, leaving 30 grand. Let me tell you, folks, what 30 grand buys today in a house is nothing, number one. What it buys in a car is nothing, number one, new cars. You buy a, a Corolla now, it's $30,000. The average car is about 55 grand for anything with luxury. $30,000 for a home. And you go look at my video and look at my home. Turnkey, brand new, under warranty, fully equipped, gorgeous, can be towed with a half ton truck. I just had to have it. So I got it and I have no regrets. And I'm doing the same thing now. I'm paying myself back at least $1,000, if not more, every single month that I live in it. And I've already paid myself back. <clears throat> I think I've been about two months now I've had it. So I've already paid myself $2,000 more back from what I paid of 30 grand after my trade-in plus taxes. Uh, so I've got my tax money back. And now I'm back to the 30 grand. And every month that goes by, I get another $1,000 paying me back for that camper. So all I got to do is live in it for 30 months. And it's a free camper. Now that, folks, is how you own an RV. You live in them and you get a cheap place to stay. And that way you are paying yourself back. And if you just live in it and you don't move around, you're not spending money on gas. You're not spending money on campgrounds and additional repairs you needed by wearing your tires out or things breaking. Because when you do tow them, things shake and can break. The shake and break. <laughs> you know, deal. So kind of stay put for a while. I do want to travel. I am going to pull mine. I'm going to do exactly what I said you might not want to do, but it's not going to be all the time. I'm going to always find a place that's a home base that I can return to. And I'm just going to go out and travel a little bit and, and see the country uh, and make my YouTube videos because that's what I do now. But uh, an RV to me is fun. An RV to me is the only way to live. An RV to me is all I'm ever going to do. 
I'm never going to buy a house or move into a house again for the foreseeable future. When the market changes and if the Lord blesses me uh, financially and I save my money and I get so old that I don't want to pull one anymore and that day will come, of course, then I will find a, a 55 or older community. Uh, there's places in Florida called the Villages. There's places around the country. There's mobile home parks that are 55 and older and those mobile homes can last until you die. I, there are mobile home parks all over Florida and there are people that have been living in them that die every day. I have friends of mine that live in them and they tell me the only sad part about living there is they see the ambulances coming every month a couple of times taking some away that have just died there. They, they, they moved in years ago. That's what they lived in. Well, I got no problem with that. I want to live frugal. And right now I am as about as frugal as it gets. And I'm living in a beautiful, gorgeous home. You've seen it. It is not uh, like a gypsy. It is not like uh, some crackhead living in some, you know, riggedy, raggedy old RV that you see sometimes parked at a Walmart parking lot. I am living large and I have a beautiful truck to pull it. And I say, if you are gonna get your social security and you have a pension and you wanna downsize and sell your home while it's worth so much money right now, and you have got your children grown, or let's say you do work remote and uh, you know your kids are grown and you're gonna you know, go out on the, on the world and in the country on the streets and, and, and find you a place and do what I'm doing and make your money that way, then you can do that too. But the, the kind of RV you get for what it costs to operate, the places where you're gonna stay, the climate you're gonna be in, the vehicle you have to tow it, all these variables are important, but it is a fantastic life because no matter where you go, the people that also live where you live or camping where you're camping are like-minded people. When you stay in a home or an apartment, <clears throat> you can go weeks and months, years, and never know your neighbors, never even speak to them. People come in, they hit the garage door opener, they go in, they close the garage door, they don't wanna to talk to nobody. But with RVing, it's like motorcycling and other types of uh, hobbies that people are into that are like-minded and you meet so many nice people. Some of the nicest people in the world are RVers and they will help you out too. There's forums you can be on, there's groups uh, through Facebook. Uh, there's so many, so many great things to step up your life in your retirement years that you can just find this every day becoming more and more addictive and you learn more and more ways and ideas to go and travel and um, just be just be happy. And if you get it down, like I said, where you don't owe anything on it and you don't owe anything on your vehicle and you got a pension or you got some money coming in and you can also be traveling around, you can be a camp host and stay for free at a campground or an RV park. You can work for uh, all kinds of different places while you're living in an RV park and work part-time as a side hustle to give you something to do and to make you some extra money. There's all these things you can do and picking up part-time work. And if you move on one day and you have to quit and you give them a little notice, it's no big deal to them and it's no big deal to you. You can pick up another part-time side hustle at the next place you go. You might even say, I'm gonna return here in six months and they'll take you back. You never know, you can build it. There's so many, so many variables and so many ways of enjoying the RV life to me versus living in a solid structure. That's it, you're depending on the job in that location. You gotta deal with all the traffic. You gotta deal with what you see when you walk out your door every day, same thing. Your little circle that you travel every day when you go out is the same and it just becomes mundane. Now, if you're younger, I'm not talking to you. You have kids you're raising, I'm not talking to you. You have to be where your school is, where your job is. You're, you're still progressing in life. You're not at that point yet. I'm talking to people that are either no children and can work remote and want to do an RV or they're retired and um, or have money and uh, don't have to, you know, you don't have children to keep in school. You can self-school them, I guess. But when you start putting more people in an RV, let me just touch on that before I go. <clears throat> the wolf pup was cramped with one. 
and probably after a while it was probably not doable. Even as a minimalist, I found it becoming to the point where it really needed to be not so bad that I couldn't take it, but I really wished I could have had something bigger. I needed more storage, closet space. Uh, what I have now, even with a second person, and this is a total couple's camper, it really is, but it might only be a, co a couple's camper for weekends or a month or a few weeks when I'm vacation. As far as full-time living, you know, I have two theater chairs. There's no room for anybody else to come over and sit and visit. And, you know, it's that room there or the bedroom. And while you can still go outside and go to work and do different things, it's it's more than doable, but it's it's a challenge. With one person, it's a it's a it's a it's a mansion. <laughs> it's a mansion. Two, it can it just depends on the two. If you like being together and you love one another, you could you could live in a car together, I guess, in that case. Uh, but if you're going to live two of you, I would say maybe a fifth wheel uh, with two and three slides, a nice one ton truck with a diesel motor. And, uh, you know, you have you really have a bigger than some small apartments uh, or a, a longer towable. It's not a fifth wheel or a very inexpensive, longer uh, class A if you have the money. Uh, but you need 35 to 40 feet, in my opinion, uh, for two people. Under 30 feet, what I have 25 feet, is just as good as it gets for one person and can be very, very good for two people, the right two people. But uh, it's, it's a borderline right there. So that's what I got to tell you. I'll include more videos later about how to operate a, 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 a not a YouTube, a, a, an RV, how to how to do different things, what to what to think about, what to look for, things to buy, how to operate it, how to hook it up, how to dump all your sewer, how to hook your electric up, your hoses up, all the things they want you to do, the maintenance. What I've learned, I'll be glad to share with you. So stay tuned for that. I think that on this video here, we covered quite a bit. I definitely believe we crushed it. <laughs>